Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today we have a real chef. He's not just a great vegan chef. He's a great chef, and he happens to also be vegan. And he's going to talk about the seven culinary keys to amazing plant-based cuisine, and he's going to demonstrate perfect for this time of year, a raw autumn fruit cumble, cumble. What's a cumble? A crumble. <laughs> Please welcome to the show, Chef Mark Reinfeld. It's so nice to see you again. You really are. You know, I love watching great chefs perform and you are one of them. Oh, thank you so much for having me. AJ takes one to know one, right? Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I, I mean, you, you're like, you're like, when I watch you work, I just, I mean, the fact that you could just do what you did at Summerfest in case people haven't seen you on the show before, or unfamiliar with you, you've been the chef, uh, well, before the pandemic ended the meeting in person of Summerfest for several years. And when you took over, it just elevated the food there to like the next level. And you didn't just have vegan food. You had vegan food that included everyone that included the difficult SOS free people like me, the raw people, the gluten-free people, the junk food people. It's like everybody was included. And these people that were making the food weren't vegan. So you obviously you had to train them and you just walked around like non, like you were so calm. Like, I, I mean, I don't get it. Like, cause if I was running that, I would be like freaking out. The, the freak out occurs before the meal is served. Once the meal is served, it's, uh, it's out of my hands. So that's when I let it go. <laughs> yeah. Well, you seem very easy to work with. What did, did they, did the staff there who was the staff of the university find, find it uh, fun and easy to work with you and learn these skills? Yeah, that's actually one of the more rewarding things about going there. It's in rural Pennsylvania and Chris Jolly and who, you know, who, uh, helped with the raw food and I, we go and we work with their team there and it's really cool. We see them once a year and they'll tell us all the vegan things they've done during the year, how much weight they've lost trying vegan. So it's, it's really cool. And I, I believe they're on for next summer. So hopefully you could make it there. They took a few year break. So, but they're, they're planning to do it next July. And you'll be, and you will be the chef, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Jolly is great too. He's been on the show and it's just, I just, you walk around and you're like, you're saying hi to everybody. And I'm talking, I'm like, why would he freak out? There's like thousands <laughs> of people he's got to feed, you know? Yep. And, I love feeding that many people and being behind the food at that kind of an event where all the, the kind of leading voices and plant-based nutrition and uh, are there. It's a, it's a great event. I encourage everyone to, to check it out. Is that the largest event that you've ever done yes for because it's uh from a wednesday lunch to a sunday lunch so and the first year i think there was over 700 people there and so the cumulative effect of that uh over all those days with all the different stations it's it's quite a bit of food how do you i always wonder because even though i went to culinary school anytime there was like a business class I didn't take it. I took all the electives. This really didn't help, you know, like the art and craft of food design. But how do you know when you're cooking for that many people? Like, how do you know how much to make? Uh, that's always a, a good question. You know, there's there's definitely a lot of leftovers uh, there. Sometimes we hit it, but like, you know, you always want to make more food. You always want to make sure you have enough food. So we do our best. It's just you got to be good at multi multiplication to, to make it work. Right. Because I found when, you know, I'm, I'm getting my, I'm throwing my hat back in the ring next year. I, I used to produce conferences, health conferences, one to three day conferences. And whenever we went to hotels, like in Las Vegas, it was such a struggle to get them to make enough food. Like they don't understand that vegans eat more and especially oil-free vegans. And like, they don't know calorie density and you can't use the principles of serving the standard American diet to people that eat healthy. Cause you know, a serving of asparagus in a restaurant might be six spears. And for us, it's like a pound. On trade. <laughs> Yeah. Nice. Very cool. So tell us uh, how the pandemic has changed your business. Cause I know you had a school and an academy and you couldn't teach in person for a very long time. Uh, so we, I shifted to doing more virtual trainings, which has been amazing and uh, doing them out of different kitchens and out of our home. And uh, I could share with you later, some of the programs that I have uh, developed one with my wife, Ashley, who's a natural vegan naturopathic doctor. So it's actually been an exciting and a really good turn of events to open up to more of a global audience. So everyone had to do their best to kind of 
pivot and maneuver. So this is this is where we landed and we're we're grateful. Yeah, and you're in Colorado now, right? Yes, we're in Louisville outside of Boulder. Yeah, because didn't you used to live in Portland? Uh, I traveled, I was in Hawaii for about eight years and then I went on a two week vacation and stayed for eight years, like pretty long two week vacation. But uh, then I did worldwide traveling where I would teach chef trainings and culinary immersions around the world. And Portland was a big hub. Uh, We have the Blossoming Lotus restaurant there. uh, So, which we had started in Hawaii. So it was uh, definitely a hub. That's where I met, met Ashley in Portland. Near and dear to my heart, it's definitely the vegan Mecca. Absolutely, it is. Absolutely. How long ago did you personally become vegan and why? Uh, That's a great question. I was actually on a kibbutz uh, in Israel in 1990, and uh, I was asked to, uh, we would learn Hebrew for half the day, and then we would do whatever they told us for the other half. And one day they said, go to the lul, and like a hush fell, because that was like the chicken coop. And we had to like take the chickens and put them in crates. And I think I had chicken for dinner that night and realized if I couldn't participate in that, I didn't feel right eating it. So that, that set off a chain of events. Uh, So in uh, 1990, pretty much. Wow. 1990. So that's like 20, it's like 22 years. I think it's. Close to 30. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, don't ever ask me a math question. Sorry, I, don't, I always bear, I always show my dyslexia. Okay, that, that's a long, that's very good. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. How about did, you? Did, did you get the Hall of Fame? Uh, yes, I got it. The uh, I think it was the year before you. Nice. I think because I remember you were like one of the first people I told it. Yeah, that was great. I'm so happy. Yeah. That well, and JP too. Yep. And Miyoko. It's cool. Good company. Yeah, and and Gandhi apparently, <laughs> really, really good company. Yeah, fantastic. Oh wow! So you have? Are you gonna? What would you like to do first? Your recipe, or talk about your seven culinary keys? Uh, we could do the recipe first, and then basically, like in this transition, I'll touch on the seven culinary keys because in this transition, I was really like a lot of people got introspective, and for me, I was thinking what what do I love to do? And what, what have I done in the past? It's been helpful to people. And I feel like showing people how to make plant-based food taste good in a simple form is what I love to do. And we all know we could talk all day about why we need to eat vegan and why it's good for our health and the environment and for animals. But if the food doesn't taste good, then that's not going to go very far. So I look at that as like a form of activism to show people how easy it is to prepare the food in a way that makes it taste good. So that removes like a big barrier. And then in thinking about that, I was thinking, well, what are the like the components of that that go into like creating the plant-based food? And that's where I came up with like those seven culinary keys, which is in the handout. So I won't go too in depth except for one of the keys, which I'm going to illustrate with this recipe. It's basically a, palate development. So a lifetime of just getting those nuances and the subtle flavors of food, the template recipe format, which I'm going to do today, which is looking at the underlying formula of recipes, which helps people break out of the recipe trap. I'm going to demo one recipe, but I think it's going to be about 946 recipes. I'll show you today with this one recipe. If you want to hone your math skills, maybe you could keep track as we go to see if I'm on target for that, but and, the template yeah. format is another one. Uh, and I'm going to put those all, all that you're mentioning, I'm putting in the show notes right now. So people okay. can only see them if they're watching on YouTube. Unfortunately, if you're watching on Facebook or Twitter, I can't give you the recipe and show notes. Please come on over to YouTube where all the action is and you'll see everything. <laughs> cool. Uh, the other tip is global spice blends. So getting familiar with Mexican, Ethiopian, Moroccan, Italian, uh, Cajun, Herbe de Provence, these blends uh, will, these blends allow you with kind of the flick of a spoon to create a whole array of global cuisine, Uh, world sauces, so incorporating the sauces from around the world, like the curry and the peanut, sweet and sour. Veganizing is a big one, which I'm sure you've developed over, over the years where you 
look to take dishes that we grew up with and isolate what's the, the non-vegan component and see how we could veganize it to create the similar flavors and textures. Superfood nutrition would be the sixth key and that's incorporating raw foods and superfoods to have your meals be energizing and feeding our, you know, our bodies and our souls. And then the last key is the experimentation. So that's just like the lifelong R&D, practicing, learning, and being gentle with yourself uh, as, as you go. So Mark, I got some bad news. Well, it's not terrible news. Okay. As you know, every guest, well, maybe you don't know, but every guest on Chef AJ Night Live writes the show notes and you had sent me show notes. And unfortunately, what you sent me, and I want all that in there, is already 40, over 4,800 words. I can't have that and the template and the recipe. So maybe there's okay. a way people can contact you, get on your mailing list, and then you could send it to them. Do you know what I'm saying? It's You're going to have to yeah. choose. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, I would do the show notes with, with the links if you could. That would be great. Okay. So then maybe to get the template, what if we just say in the show notes to get the recipe template and the recipe, they can email you and they get on your mailing list. Would that be fair to say? That would be perfect. Thank the, you. And the, it's info, at, uh, the info yeah. address, right? The info at Chef Mark Rainfall. Yep. Yes. Yep. That's the one. Perfect. Yeah. I just, I didn't notice you already had 4,833 words. Okay. I thought I went by characters. I thought it was under the character. Range. No, it, it, it was, but it's saying it's 4833. So, um, okay. but, but everything you wrote was great. So let's keep that there. And then we'll put a little note that says, this is how you get everything. Very cool. Thank you Perfect. so much. Thank, no, thank okay, you. Great. So uh, I'll show you the recipe. And when I do the recipe, I want to go over this idea of a template recipe because in all the classes that I've done over the years, this is a really big takeaway that students get. It helps people feel more confident and creative in the kitchen and really break out of the recipe uh, box. So the first part of the recipe is it's uh, an apple pear crumble. So if you look at it as a component, we're going to look at our, this is going to be called the fruit component. So I'm using apples and pears, but what do you think you could replace the apples and pears with? Uh, peaches and plums? Peaches and plums, nectarines, pineapple, mango, any type of fruit. So just that change alone, you could create many, many variations of this dish. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take uh, some of the pears and some of the apple and just place it in a bowl. I'm gonna show you two different ways of, I'm gonna show you a way of serving the dish different than the recipe. This is an individual serving. And then uh, I'm adding some raisins. So the raisins you could look at as the dry fruit component. So what do you think we could replace the raisins with? Oh, uh, currants, dates, figs. Yep, apricots, any dry fruit. So when we look at template recipes, I like the idea of looking at it as these like uh, spinning wheels on top of each other. So one wheel, we have our fruit component, which we could rotate through the different fruit. And then we have our dry fruit component. So we could rotate through our dry fruits. We're going to just set that aside and let this sit for a little bit. And we're going to uh, prepare this uh, fruit sweetened sauce that's going to be the base of our, our crumble. And for this, we're gonna use, uh, I have fresh squeezed orange juice and a little water. And so what can we replace that uh, orange juice with? I'm gonna say apple juice. Very good, excellent. Or any pear juice, different types of fruit juice. You're, you're a wonderful student, AJ, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> hey Mark, what, uh, do, you, do you have a preference with raisins? Cause I personally always preferred the golden raisins to the, you know, the traditional, whatever color they uh, are. I, I like mixing them up. I like a good Thompson raisin. I, I, uh, I like roots. Part of my thing is getting a lot of uh, variety. So I'll just keep rotating through different ones. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so the juice now I'm going to blend with uh, some medjool dates. And then I have a, a spice blend here that has a uh, cinnamon, nutmeg, and allspice. So if we look at this as a, uh, look at the template with this, 
that becomes the spice component. And so what other spices do you think would go nicely in here? Um, well, I always like vanilla powder in everything. Yep. That would be a good one. You could use uh, the pumpkin spice, uh, ginger, allspice. Cinnamon and cardamom is actually my go-to spice blend, which I'll talk more about in our cashew cream. But that's uh, gonna all go in the blender with some uh, orange zest. And if you want, you could put a little pinch of your lovely uh, green salt that you introduced me to. Oh, I'm uh, glad you liked it. Yeah, it's really nice. This is gonna get uh, blended. And uh, I'm gonna use the magic of TV land. Look how fast I got that blended there for you. <laughs> So this is a really versatile for, especially for those wanting to stay away from concentrated sweeteners, making this puree that's a date based blended with some kind of a fruit juice or it could be coconut water and then flavoring it with different spices or your vanilla powder or your citrus zest. So this, this is really versatile. I, I use this a lot when I'm doing like a fruit sweetened granola this is, if you wanted to stay away from concentrated sweeteners and make like a more of a syrup, you could use the dates blended. So I'm gonna just take this and add it to my bowl of fruit. I don't know why people even use sugar, Mark. Everything you can do with sugar, you can do with fruit. Yes, yeah, it's, uh, we grew up with it. I was in the supermarket the other day and looking at a, it was a, like a King Super and I was looking at this row of cereal that I used to eat growing up and I, the Captain Crunch and the, all the fruits, all the sugary uh, cereal. So I think that sets you up kind of for life. So this is, uh, if you could see in here in my bowl, I just have my fruit and it's just gonna sit in that uh, sauce puree and just soak up the flavor. And we're gonna just set this aside for a moment while we work on our uh, crumble. Um, I could ask if anyone has any questions about what I just went over before I move on to the crumble. Oh, sorry. I was watching you. I'll, I'll go check the chat now. But you know okay. what I was wondering? Um, in, what, what was the most uh, popular dish that you remember serving at Vegetarian Summerfest? Uh, I would say I, from what I did, the, the grilled tempeh Reuben, I think was a big hit. I love uh, making the using uh, tempeh and making a, a Russian dressing with the sauerkraut. And grilling the tempeh is definitely my, my favorite way to go. That, that was a, a big hit. Yeah. Uh, what was the favorite among the people that weren't vegan there, the staff that was helping? Do you remember? Uh, I remember the gravy that I did a macadamia, nut, or I think it was a pecan crusted tofu. And I remember this gravy that I've been making for years that the staff really enjoyed. Someone paid me a compliment that they're grandmother has been making gravy for them and it, this was all vegan and they, they really liked it. So it's definitely very fulfilling when you're able to show people the food tastes good and it just happens to be uh, plant-based. Wow. Was there anything that didn't fly? Hmm. Or that uh, you noticed, hey, a lot of this is coming back. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a few years thinking about, let's see. Sometimes some of the soups might not have been as well received, but the soups we were making in a big, uh, like big urn with a kayak paddle, I'm sure you've seen them. So I think overall the, the food was uh, very well received, but there's probably a few that weren't quite as well received. Yeah. Do you think it changes a recipe when you have to like, I mean, obviously like doubling and tripling people do at home, but when you're cooking for that many people, does it, does it change the recipe sometimes? Yeah. It's tricky when you multiply because it's not a straight, straight process, like the onion, celery, garlic, the veggies, those you could do pretty much going, if you're going from one batch to a hundred batches, you could multiply by a hundred, but the spices and the seasoning is where it gets tricky at the end. So like the salt and the 
crushed red pepper flakes, things like that. You wouldn't want to do as you want to, as you know, in recipe development, you want to do things in very small, small increments. So that that's the biggest adjustment. Otherwise you could get it pretty, pretty close. Have you ever seen those immersion blenders that are like as big as a person? Yes. Yeah. Those, those are really fun. And uh, I remember one of the soups where it was a sweet potato soup and they didn't uh, chop the potatoes first before they put it in. And in that situation, you have to have eyes all around your head. And if you miss something, it's like galloping horses and it could go really far out of your reach. And uh, one of those instances I, I saw in slow motion them take like a whole box of potatoes and just put it in this this big urn and we had to like use that it was like bobbing for apples they were just floating and missing the immersion but th those are definitely from fun to power up yeah cool cool so any uh questions about that before i do the uh i'm going to talk just about the crumble a little bit yep nope so far no questions in the chat okay oh um well, it's it's not about the crumble, but what was your most memorable request? Maybe that somebody asked you to make, either in general or maybe at Summerfest. That's a good one. In Summerfest, as you can imagine, there's people are very particular, so we would get requests for like leaving out certain ingredients, like different spices or different nuts or seeds. So I remember one one person commenting just like they the flavor on the SOS station was different than the the other stations and I thought that was an interesting comment without the salt but oil you could get by really easily I find and make things taste as if they have oil when you leave the salt out I think that's where like it gets a little trickier so the, those kind of requests would would come up Salt is definitely the hardest. And if people are not <laughs> used to not eating salt, they're not going to like the food without it at first. But yeah. Awesome. But that, uh, that salt, that green, uh, the seaweed-based one is really nice compared to the other ones that I've, I've tried in the past. Fantastic. Cool. So uh, for, the, for the crumble portion, I'm going to use, um, I have it in my food processor here. I'm using... Uh, putting walnuts in there and uh what can we replace the walnuts with oh pecans yep pecans uh any nuts or seeds pistachios sunflower seeds pumpkin seeds uh macadamia nuts uh I, I, I rotating through those then i'm gonna put some of the dates in here and with that, uh, what do you think we could replace the dates with in this in this instance? Figs. Yep, figs, apricots, raisins, uh, any dried fruit prunes could go well. And then I have uh, my spice component here, which is some cinnamon and cardamom, which that, that's definitely one of my go-to favorites. And then I'm adding some uh, dried coconut to that. But don't you find that prunes are a little bit too pruney? I mean, you know, <laughs> uh, they serve a they serve a, a function <laughs> a lot of times. I mean, because I, I love using dates primarily because they're so neutral, but I find that prunes are they they just have like a pruney taste, if that makes uh -huh. sense. Yeah. Uh, so this just going to give this a little zap, and uh, again, while I have this uh, crumble done here. Uh, this is a good technique which uh, of combining the nuts and the dates to create raw pie crust. That's a technique we use for that and also as the base for the energy balls. For this, uh, we're gonna, I keep it a little drier to use as a crumble on top of the, of our, the fruit in the, in the apple crumble. And then in the recipe, I have a, cashew uh, cardamom cream. And so this is, uh, the cashew cream to me is one of the, the core, if there were mother sauces in vegan cuisine, I'd put the cashew cream in there as one of them, 
just soaking cashews and blending them uh, form the base of sauces that can go all the way in the savory direction with your sour cream and cheeses uh, and as well as in the sweet direction. So this is like a sweet uh, dessert cream and using the cinnamon and cardamom uh, to flavor it. It's, uh, that's one of my, after traveling in India, I got really turned on to the cardamom use in, in dessert. So I love uh, putting that in there. And that is what uh, we're gonna top our, our dessert with. Any questions on that before I just do uh, the plating of the of the dish? I'm not seeing any questions. Okay. She put four question marks uh, before. People are just making comments like "yay for cashews" and no, okay. I'm not, and I wasn't bashing prunes as a fruit. I'm just saying that I find that they have a little bit stronger flavor than say dates. If I'm doing definitely, yep. Yeah. And dates, there's so many amazing varieties. Uh, for this, for serving this dish, you could, the recipe has you place it in an eight by eight uh, dish, or you could just do them individually. This would be a nice way to serve it uh, and save your guests from having to uh, scoop it out themselves. So you just uh, basically you could fill a ramekin or uh, I have just a small bowl here and I'm going to fill it, fill it up quite a bit. And then I'm going to uh, put my crumble on top here. And th this is 100% fruit sweetened. So I like to say with uh, sweeteners, you could look at them as a philosophy major. I like looking at things on a spectrum. And on one end, you have like the dark side of the sweetener world is the refined white sugar and the high fructose corn syrup. And then on the other side, we have the just the whole fruit. So this is definitely closer to the, uh, the whole fruit side and just making that puree. I'm gonna to top it with my cream here. And then I just have a mint leaf and then some fresh uh, strawberries and uh, blueberry. And that is our very simple uh, raw, apple pear crumble. This is a variation of a recipe. Mo most of my recipes are in the 30 minute or less category. So you should be able to finish this uh, start to finish in about 30 minutes or less. Nice. What's the difference with all the different names like, you know, Brown Betty, Crumble, Crisp, uh, 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 what, it's, there's so many different names for fruit desserts, cobbler, um, what's the one called, clafuti, like, do you know all the differences? Uh, I do know the, a few of the big differences. I'd have to refer to my notes to uh, let you know them again, like the, the crumble has the crumble on top, the cobbler is where it's baked on, like poured on and baked on, so you could crisp it up as well. Yep, I always wondered. And then brown Betty and buckle and you know blueberry buckle and, and apple brown <laughs> Betty and all those different things. Nice. You know, Ooh, well, apple pie, all, all the different names. Yep, does anyone have any questions about that uh, dessert as a whole? Because now I'm gonna review it as a template and just show you uh, how many variations are possible from it. So. <laughs> We do have one question and I think you'll be okay. able to answer this. Jackie says she has a nut allergy. So what can she use instead? Uh, any of the seeds can work. If you could use like a sunflower seed or a pumpkin seed, uh, hemp seeds are nice and that uh, sesame seeds. Great. I usually refer to like the, as a component, like a nut or seed component. So if we review, uh, the, the base, we had our, our fruit component, which was apple and pear. We had our dried fruit component, which was the raisins. And then we had a, a, our sauce component, which had a, a juice component, a dried fruit component, a, and a spice component. And then for the crumble, we had the, the nut or seed component, the dried fruit component, and the spice component. 
And so you could see by, if you used uh, mangoes and you used uh, pistachios and a, a pear juice uh, with different seasoning, different, uh, your vanilla powder, you could create so many different uh, flavor profiles just from that, that one, one formula. Hmm. She wants to know, would she soak the seeds first? Uh, it's not necessary to soak them, especially in this recipe, because you want it to be a little bit of a dry uh, topping. Good. All right. Where'd you go? Me? I'm here. Oh, good. Okay. I was like, I, I'm like, I'm the only one here. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned I, I could share a little bit about some of the programs that that we're offering or if you have. other. Oh, yeah, that would be amazing. Yes, please do. Because I, I everything you gave me is in the show notes. So, OK, uh, well, wonderful. So the, the core program that I'm doing now, it's a four week uh, intensive where it's uh, five hours a day uh, of kitchen time, four hours a day of kitchen time with me uh, and it's uh, for five days a week for four weeks. And it's a program that's approved for 120 continuing education credits with the American Culinary Federation. And it's been really an amazing uh, experience for those of us doing it. It's like a real deep dive where the first few days we do the, uh, we go into this, these uh, culinary keys. So we'll do palate development the first day and then template recipes uh, the second day. The third day we do global cuisine and introduce all the different spice blends from around the world. And then each of the remaining days we do a deep dive into a topic such as uh, soups or salads and dressings, grain dishes, plant proteins, uh, fermenting cheeses. There's three days of raw foods. Uh, Miyoko was kind enough to do a, be a guest presenter on plant-based cheeses. And I have other uh, expert instructors on bread baking and pastry who teach. Uh, and then I also offer what's unique about it is we do one-on-one -on -one, uh, weekly coaching calls where I work with people and the, the class size is limited to six. So I'm really able to work with people and meet them where they're at and kind of help guide them towards the next step. So that that's a, uh, you could see that information in, in the show notes, but that that's been the core program that I've been doing uh, since, uh, since for the last year. Nice. And so do you do this on zoom? Yeah, it's via zoom. And there's, uh, there's many recipes, a few hundred page training manual people get. Uh, it's very comprehensive. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, really perfect fit for people that are wanting to do that deep dive. Like some people are considering like going for a longer culinary program, but they're not sure if they want to spend a year or the resources to do that. So it's a good fit for people who want to test the waters for that, like professional chef training. Uh, and I've had registered dietitians take it and uh, people that are going into second careers as well as people looking to enter the plant-based culinary world. So it's, it's, uh, I love doing it. It's been, that's been a great, uh, great change since, uh, for the last year. Cool. So let's see, uh, Bidette saying is this program in person only it's actually not in person. It's only virtual, right? Correct. Yeah. And I actually want one person found me through your show, uh, who did the course. It just, completed a diet dietitian's program, but, uh, it's, uh, it's virtual for four hours a day. We're in the kitchen, making food together, uh, showing like consistencies and tasting. And I was amazed that it could work so well in a virtual format, but, but I really, I love it. It's been, a, everyone could listen to their own music and it's really good, good energy. So, so that, if, they're that's all their, if they're listening to their own music, I imagine you see them, but they're muted. Because if everybody was listening to music, different music, that would be <laughs> crazy. Yeah, it's uh, not at a loud volume, not as loud as I usually like like to play the music. 
Right. So you said Miyoko makes a guest appearance doing cheese. Now, who are some of the other instructors and what are they offering? Uh, she did one for the, the last class that I did. Uh, the, I have a, a bread baker. She has her own bread company, uh, Lexi. She teaches uh, bread baking and pastry. And uh, she's made some am amazing foods. And then I have a chef, uh, Janet, who's a classically trained chef for 30 plus years. And she does uh, sauces and the mother sauces and pasta making. And uh, chef, chef Ron uh, has done uh, talks on plant protein and seitan. So I like bringing in uh, other culinary voices. It's been, it's been really fun. Nice, nice. Who's your favorite chef? Vegan chef. Well, it could be, it doesn't have to be vegan, actually. Besides you? Ha ha ha. <laughs> Flattery will get you everywhere. Uh, I like a, a lot of the, the kind of the vegan chefs out there. No one kind of comes to mind as a, like the top besides you, but uh, everyone like I'm very inspired by a lot of the chefs uh, out there now. That's so cool. Do you have a favorite vegan restaurant? A uh, favorite vegan, uh, Hangawi in New York City. If you've ever been there, is it's a Korean restaurant. That's uh, it's they don't have vegan on the sign, but it's like a you go into a, like a Korean sanctuary setting where you could sit on the floor on the the mats, and it's a really amazing restaurant. That that's definitely one of my favorites. And where is this restaurant at? Uh, it's on, it's like in New York City around like uh, Park Avenue and 30th, somewhere in that, that area. Cool. Yep. Cool. And, uh, and then I did, uh, if I could also mention this program that uh, Ashley and I developed called Nourish Your Life. And it's a, it's a six part series that uh, helps people just getting started on the plant-based lifestyle uh, where uh, Ashley talks about plant-based nutrition and I go over like these core template recipes and it's for really, we start with like, where's the kitchen and which end of the knife is the sharp end. We start at like really basic and uh, that, that's been a wonderful program as well that uh, people have enjoyed and uh, we're actually doing a version of it for uh, Adventist Health as a part of a study for them. So that's for people who are wanting to kind of get get up to speed with being comfortable and confident in the kitchen and also having like a basic knowledge of like plant-based nutrition. Nice. Tell us, about, you've written quite a few books. Tell us about them. I have several of yours. I have your soup book. I have your uh, the Blossoming Lotus book. That's a fabulous one. Uh, the Blossoming Lotus. So uh, yeah, The Blossoming Lotus, the Vegan Fusion World Cuisine was the first book that we wrote. And uh, that was, has a forward by Jane Goodall. And it, uh, it won a bunch of national awards at the time it came out. It's an introduction to like global cuisine. Uh, it's one of, I'd say one of my life work books that has like, sacred site photography and wisdom quotes from around the world. It's, a, it's kind of like a coffee table book. And then after that, we did the Idiot's Guide to Eating Raw, which just focuses on raw foods. And then I did the 30-minute uh, the vegan series, which started with the 30-minute vegan. And then there's the 30-minute vegan Taste of the East, which is Asian cuisine, Taste of Europe, which is European cuisine. And I I needed to do the, the three month Europe trip just for uh, recipe testing and making sure I had a good picture of the Eiffel Tower for the book. So that I love that book. I love the European cuisine. And then uh, we did uh, Soups On, which is I like to promote as vegan soups for the chicken soul. That takes a minute to sink in that one. Love and then uh, Healing the Vegan Way came after that. And that, I, that one has a lot of the voices from people that I met at Summerfest, like Dr. Greger and uh, Hans Deal and uh, Joel Kahn contributed uh, to, to that book. 
And then uh, the last book, which I did with uh, Ashley, was called The Ultimate Age Defying Plan. Uh, and all those recipes are seven ingredients or less. And uh, in that book, I felt like I'm doing pretty good for 80 years old. So I needed to share my secrets with the world at last. So that's all revealed in that, in that book. And uh, Dr. Clapper, I was a contributor to that, to that book. Wow. You are, you're a busy guy. Yep. That's a, uh, it's, it's definitely a passion. I, like I mentioned, I just love showing people how, how easy it is to create plant-based food that, that tastes good, that satisfies them and uh, leaves them not longing for, for uh, the food they used to eat. All right. Uh, Jackie says we can buy these books on Amazon. Yes, Jackie, you can. Thank you. Nice. Okay. And Angela says, do you find that most of your fans are exclusively vegan or vegan curious or vegan friendly? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, I like to call them the veg curious. Most people like in all of my classes, like the vegan police are, are never present in any of my classes. I, I just like showing people again, just what they can do to bring like delicious plant-based foods into their life. When I go into raw foods, though, the raw food police are present and any raw food violations, I push a button under the counter and a trap door opens under people and they're, they're eliminated. But vegan police are not not in any of my classes. Well, that's funny. Mary Jean says, did you just say you're 80 years old? I, that's it's a joke. Sometimes my sense of humor in some of my classes, one guy, he couldn't tell whether I was joking or or being uh, serious. So I had to like raise my hand every time it was a joke. So that, that one was a joke. That's funny. Yep. Well, I just did a show last week, Longevity Week, and I had vegans in their 80s and they look nice. Great. Yeah. Nice. And if, if people don't want to take your classes right now, is still there a way to connect with you either on social media or through a newsletter? Yeah, at uh, chefmarkreinfeld.com, you could sign up for the newsletter and uh, there's information about events and I put it out once a month with like recipes and uh, just upcoming events, things of that nature. Nice. Well, congratulations on getting this uh, virtual way to work because it sounds great because then people don't have to travel and they can still. Yeah, work. yeah, I'm sure, you know, like you, you reach people from all over the world. So it's, uh, it's definitely very fulfilling. I'm appreciating it. That is really fun. OK, since I'm almost there and look very good, too, the doctor did not believe me. Ha ha, says Mary Jean. OK, <laughs> nice. Cool. All right. You know, I don't know your wife. Do, have I ever met her? What, what does uh, she do? Uh, Ashley Boudet, she's a, a naturopathic doctor trained at the uh, Natural College of Natural Medicine in uh, Portland. That's where we met. She And she collaborated on, on that book with me. And uh, we have something called The Doctor and the Chef together. So it's a uh, pairing like plant-based cuisine and natural remedies is uh what we like to help people just incorporate that into like making the plant-based lifestyle stick which i think is is really important yeah absolutely uh angela says do you work with kids uh i do work with kids i have a uh i have a, i do my experiments on our our own kids i have a four-year-old and a six-year-old i've had kids uh, young teenagers take some of my classes and people ask how long we're going to raise our kids uh, vegan. And I say until they're old enough to decide for themselves, like 22 or 23. Nice. So, so, so you, you vegan since before birth even, huh? <laughs> vegan in the womb. Vegan in the womb. I love it. I love it. That's great. <laughs> so the, are they, are they pretty happy being vegan right now? Uh, I think they're at this stage, they don't know any difference. So we're, we're in like that blissful ignorance stage or it's, uh, we'll see how long that lasts. If only it would stay right like that. Yeah. I mean, the questions definitely are starting to come from just being in school and like, what's a hamburger? Can we go fishing or things <laughs> like that? So I'm sure I, I would need counsel from parents who have been doing it longer than me yeah uh, jackie says when you're substituting seeds for nuts what's the amount same right it would be the same makes sense 
And a lot of it is just that trial and error. So just, uh, oops. Sorry about the that. The trial and error and seeing like what flavors you like, but uh, pretty much any of those seeds that I mentioned could, could work interchangeably. Nice. Are you working on any new books right now? Uh, I'm not on working on a new book right now. I'm working on uh, teasing out this idea of the seven culinary keys into more of a, like, I guess it would be considered a book. That's, that's what I've been working on. And then also doing this, uh, working on the, the doctor and the chef, our, our Nourish Your Life program. There's a, there's an integrative oncologist in, uh, on the West coast that we're working with. And I know like in the cardio world, we know all the, the famous, uh, plant-based doctors that are getting really good results with, uh, a plant-based diet. And, uh, Dr. Ellis, Bob Ellis is a retired oncologist on, out on the West coast. And he's, he's has a lot of success in terms of like remission and survivorship. So we've been working on developing a program with him, which is, is really exciting. Nice. Nice. Uh, Angela says, I have a nearly four-year-old. What's your four-year-old's favorite dinner? Uh, broccoli, tofu, and noodles with avocado. Any sauce on that? Uh, he likes nutritional yeast, the hippie dust. Oh, hippie I never heard it called that. That's hilarious. Really? <laughs> You have a favorite brand of nutritional yeast? Uh, I like the Red Star, the Large Flakes, uh, and the Bragg's one is good too. Uh, but I like the the Large Flakes is what I, my go to. Nice. What three things do you always have in your refrigerator? Good one. That's a good uh, like uh, I have plant based milk, fresh berries, and uh, can I cheat? And uh, tahini. Tahini. I, I love a good good tahini. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, good. Well, it's so fun catching up with you. Thank you, AJ. It's wonderful to see you again. Thank Congratulations you. Congratulations. Everything you have going on. Well, okay. Wait, got another question. What can't you live without? Uh, and in the kitchen, I would say if I. If I go a few days without nutritional yeast, I'll start uh, twitching, twitching a little bit. So uh, that's definitely one of my my go tos. And I, I like doing a superfood smoothie in the morning. So those all like the chia seeds, hemp seeds, uh, the maca powder, kind of those superfoods. Mm -hmm. Those those are are pretty much a daily uh, sustaining part of our our di diet. I was going to say hot water because there's nothing worse than a cold shower. <laughs> <laughs> well, or my, how about uh, one food if you were stuck on a desert oh, island? That's potato. so easy. Sweet potatoes, Hannah yams. Really? Hannah yams. Oh my goodness. I could live on them. And I do every day for lunch for 12 years. But the wow. Hannah's not, not, I don't like the orange ones. The really? Hannah's. Yeah. Uh, mine would be coconut. Really? The, the whole coconut. Because you could, you could build your house out of it. You can make your clothes out of it. You have your the meat, the water, it's very, coconut would be uh, my, my definite one. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Well, those are fun. Oh, uh, does, Anne says, does Chef Mark have suggestions for getting our local veg fest, which I just attended, to move off junk food vegan speakers and to true health? I was disappointed, only one great speaker. Uh, which, uh, at the local one here in Colorado or just in- And where are you from and which veg fest? Hey, I got kicked out of a veg fest because I was healthy. Really? She got so mad at me um, because I said oil wasn't healthy. And uh, like they were, they had all the vendors. It was cupcake vendors. You know, I got kicked out of the Boston veg fest and never invited back. Oh my goodness. I can't picture you getting let out of a venue with- uh... Oh yeah, <laughs> she did not like me. And, I, and I, I wasn't even bashing it in a mean way. I was kind of doing it in a funny way, but she yeah. did not like it. All I said is welcome to the Boston Cupcake Festival. <laughs> you know, and that was, I guess, offensive to her, but it's true. You know, it's like there, when I go to veg fests, there's nothing I can eat. Like nothing, yeah. nothing. Yeah. A lot of, I mean, just writing a letter to the organizers and maybe putting some suggestions out for 
for speakers would be, that would be the way I would go for something. Oh, like that. Sonoma County. That's interesting, Anne, because Linda Middlesworth was one of the speakers. And even though she is a ethical vegan, she's also a health promoting vegan. So yeah, that's too bad. Yeah. Well, you make sure that there's something for everyone when you do your events. I know that because I've been. I, I definitely try. Yeah. Nice. Well, thanks, Mark. This was great. And I hope everyone will email info at Chef Mark Reinfeld to get that seven keys, the culinary key template and the wonderful recipe that he demonstrated today. Thank you, AJ. Take care. Be well. Right. See you Take soon. Hopefully I'll see you at Summerfest. Oh, that would be great. Take care, okay. Mark. And Take care. thanks Bye -bye. all of you. Thank you. And thanks Bye. all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my guest is a vegan cardiologist, Dr. Baxter Montgomery. When it's a doctor, you've got to get those questions in in advance. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>